The Excel team have been keeping a little secret from us. Now, this isn't just hype to make you watch to the end of the video. This is 100% true. Over on LinkedIn, Owen Price shared a method using Group by, and one of the comments was from Joe McDade. Now, if you don't know who Joe is, Joe works on the Excel team and has been spearheading a lot of the new Excel functions. And this was Joe's comment. Owen Price, got something secret for you. And at the end it says, our documentation is missing this advanced scenario. I'll get this fixed. So what is this advanced method that the Excel team have been holding on to? That's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. What is this secret you might ask? And don't worry, I'm not going to make you wait until the end of the video. Joe provides an example and then goes on to say, lambdas are typically supplied as one dimensional arrays. However, if you provide a two dimensional array where the first row or column is lambdas and the second is text, we can use the text as the friendly names for lambdas. Now there's a good chance that you've got no idea what that means. So let me explain this to you with an example. Here we are in Excel and we have our data. We have a column called item and a column called sales. And we're going to analyze these values using the group by function. So in cell E4, I'll type equals, group by, open your bracket. The first argument is row fields. These are the values that we want to group by. For that, we want our item values. The next argument is values. These are the values that we want to aggregate on. And for that, we're going to use our sales values. Next, we have our function argument. And in there, we have a list of functions that we can use, and we can also provide our own custom function. Now, if we want to provide multiple calculations, we can use the hstack function. So hstack, open your bracket, and we're going to provide the sum and also the average. I'll then close the H stack, close the bracket at the end and commit that formula. So we now have our values grouped and they show the sum and the average. Now let's suggest that we want to add another calculation. We're going to edit our formula and this time our calculation is going to show the range of values. So the difference between the smallest and the largest value. Now there isn't a function that we can use for this. We have to create our own function. And for that, we can use Lambda. So I'll enter Lambda. And the values that we're going to pass across have a placeholder value of, let's say, X. Then we can create our function. And we want the maximum value from X minus the minimum value from X. That is our custom function. And when we commit that, we now have our sum, our average, and our range, which is called custom. That's not a particularly useful name. If anyone sees that, they're gonna say, what is custom? And we then have to explain it. Now in this scenario, it's not a big issue because we could just drop the first row and then we could create our own custom header row. But what if our group by were rotated so that it had a vertical orientation. I'm going to copy our formula. I'll press Control C to copy that and then come across to cell J4. I'll then paste in our formula. And rather than H stack, we're going to use V stack. When we commit that, our values now go down. We have groups for Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and our total. The problem comes with our calculation. That is sum, average, and custom. To change this word custom to describe what that calculation is would be reasonably complex. But this is where the secret comes into play. There's an easy way to provide custom names to our functions. And we're going to do this in our original calculation first. We are using HStack to provide a one-dimensional array of our calculations. But if we provide a two dimensional array where we have our functions and then also the names that we want to assign to those functions, that will give us our nice names. At the start, I'm going to use vstack, open your bracket. 
then we're going to provide our function names. And it's a comma, and then as an array, so we need a curly bracket. Our first column might be total sales. Our second column might be average sales. And then our last column might be range. I'll then close that array with another closing curly bracket and I'll enter another closing bracket to complete our formula. When we commit that, we now have our custom headings, total sales, average sales, and range. We no longer have custom as a value. I just want to interrupt things here to tell you about a free course that we're offering called Modern Excel Formulas. It goes deep into understanding how Excel formulas really work and contains techniques you won't have seen in any other course. And to sign up, you just need to follow the links in the descriptions box below. Let's now apply this to our vertical orientation. So instead of V stack, which we already have, we need to use H stack. We'll then edit our formula. We need a comma and we need to enter our array. So an opening curly bracket, we're going to use total sales. Now this time our array needs to be in rows rather than across columns. So we need to use a semicolon as the separator. We can then use average sales. And then finally, we can use range. We will close that array at the end. We'll enter a closing bracket. And when we commit that, we now get exactly the result that we want. Total sales, average sales, and range. So that is how we can provide a custom heading to our group by function. And that is the sneaky secret that the Excel team have been holding onto. We can create a custom header when using the group by function. If you like this video, then make sure to subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.